When I left, still your grace pursued me In the night, you still covered me When I fall, Lord, you're never too far from me No, you're never too far from me Yeah, just one worship away
somebody told me, I know for myself, you are. You're here with me. You're here with me. Even when I turn my back, I know you're here to stay. You're never away from me. God, you are closer than close. There is no distance with us. Branded me with your blood.
everybody <clears throat> we're gonna get started today <clears throat> sorry excuse me um so welcome to day six guys thank you so much for being here i know it's not a work day so everybody's not up <laughs> or if they are up they got stuff to do it's saturday so thank you for being here i will have the replay out for those who did not make it this morning but today i just feel like it's um a time where we need to meditate on a few things. Um, meditate on the word as a reminder of what you need to be doing during this journey, of what you need to be doing daily, because we are in a battle with our fertility. This is not something that um, to take lightly is not something that's easy. We all know how hard this journey is, how trying, how things come up all the time. And so I was reading my Bible app today. So some of you guys may, um, if you read the Bible app, you may have seen this verse today. So I just wanted to read it. I'm reading the message version. And this is Ephesians 6, 11. And I'm going to put read the full chapter. So this will be our verse today. Um, and it's called a fight to the finish in the message version. And that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials 
and put them to you so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. There's no weekend war that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple hours. This is for keeps, our life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them to get throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Cheryl said, yes, yeah, she read this. All I could think of is when it said, no, keep, um, basically keep everyone accountable so that no one falls out or drops out. All I could think about is this group and how I want you guys to still to continue to hold each other accountable, talk to each other in the group, say to each other, you know, how are you doing? Like lift each other up. Um, yes, I'm going to do it, but jump in and comment on somebody's post, um, share something inspirational like Chanel did this morning. Just make sure that um, thank you, Chanel. Ephesians 6, 11, Yes. And make sure that you are. And even if they're not in this group, invite somebody into the group or whoever you have in your real life, if you have anyone, because a lot of us don't, who are going through something similar, make sure you continue to encourage them. Um, I don't want any of you to drop out of this race because I know time after time after time, it becomes so difficult. It becomes so difficult to um, keep going in this race. I mean, especially when you have infertility issues, like you have all the things you have to look at. You got to look at your health. You got to look at your spirit. You got to look at um, your physical fitness, your your diet, um, things you take showers with. It's so many different things that you have to deal with in this journey. So it can get tiring. It can be exhausting. You can just be fed up with why does it have to be this way for me? Why is there so much work for me to do? I just don't care anymore. Like whatever is whatever is whatever. Or even when you do care, you're like, okay, I really believe God's going to do this for me. But when? And I know how weary some people can feel. And so I just want to speak. If you don't feel it now, trust me, believe. There will be a time coming where you may feel weary, where you may feel like this is too tough. This is too much. Even if it's not in your spirit, it might be in what you have to eat. Like, oh, my God, she told me to eat this. But y'all, I don't want to eat this. I want cheeseburger and fries. I want some fried chicken. I'm not saying you can't have those things because maybe your body digests them fine. But of course, everything in moderation. But it just there becomes a time where the task at hand can feel overwhelming. So I just want you to be encouraged and continue encouraging each other. Even when this fast is over, the group is still going to be open. I'm still going to be posting things. Of course, I'll still have times where we'll come together and pray. So just make sure you continue to look out for that. But I want to go back and talk about yesterday because um, I kind of just jumped in. How was your fast yesterday? Um, what was it like? Was it tough for you? Was it pretty simple with the no uh, caffeine tea? Is there anybody who had no caffeine tea and they're drinking theirs right now because they could not wait until after this call? Like, nope, you said 10 o'clock is over. And it is 10 o'clock. Chanel says, I was drinking hot water and lemon because I have couldn't have hot tea. I'm literally drinking tea right now, but this one doesn't have caffeine anyway, but my throat's trying to do something. So I'm just coming against that now. I speak right now, total healing to my body. Healing is in my house. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Um, 
Yeah, Chanel says she's drinking hers now. Cheryl's drinking hers now. It was simple. Your sinuses are cutting up. Yeah, my throat is doing something. And I'm like, the devil is a lie. I cut up. I don't know if y'all know this hack. Just letting you know. Cut up a fresh red or yellow onion. It stinks like crazy. You put it in your room. And it's just something about the, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but the onion does something and it just makes you feel better. Okay. So Chanel, do you have anything you want to share? If so, can you come off the mic? Because uh, BJ is crying and I need to go get him. Do you have anything you want to share? Can you share the scripture that you shared in the Facebook group and anything maybe you have? From that, maybe. Okay. All right, go for it. And I will be right back. Good morning. My computer wouldn't let me come off mute. Okay. So let me get a Bible. Um <clears throat> The scripture I shared this morning was Habakkuk, where are you? I believe it was two and three. Um, it comes from um, in the Bible app that uh, Michelle referenced. Um, I'm reading a plan that says no, no waste in the waiting. Um, so it's dealing about, it gives like a devotional and like four or five scriptures a day. And it, it, it deals with, um, when you're waiting on your promise or your purpose or anything to be revealed from God, or when you have a word from God and you don't see the manifestation and, um, it's been really, really blessing me, but I went back to that scripture was one of the scriptures from day one. And I went back to that for some reason this morning and God was like, read this again, because yesterday we talked about um, asking um, for specificities in, in the sense of when will I be able to announce my pregnancy? When will I get pregnant? When will I be able to hold um, our baby? And, you know, if we want a 2023 baby, we have a short timeline. Um, so I felt like God was telling me because he had already showed me the vision last year. He was telling me, you know, kind of like, don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. It's going to come to pass. And I just felt like, because it encouraged me that I wanted to give it to you all. So again, it's, um, Habakkuk two and three or Habakkuk. I don't know how a lot of y'all pronounce it. Um, <laughs> it says this vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow and coming, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. That's the NLT version. And then I went to the Amplified version because that's one of my favorite translations. It says, for the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurried. It hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail, even though it delays wait patiently for it because it will certainly come. It will not delay. And I was taught when the Bible repeats itself, there's emphasis. And it said delay twice in that one um, scripture. And I just heard God say, it's not delayed because it's on my time. It's only delayed because you put a time on it. So I'm challenging myself to not, yes, I want to know, Jesus, when am I going to get pregnant? <laughs> um, but I'm challenging myself not to say, I'm going to have a 20 to 23 baby. I have to be pregnant by, because just for me personally, it creates a stress and a sense of overwhelming, like, okay, I got to make sure I hit all these dates. I got to, oh my God, I fell off and I, I, I ate two cupcakes yesterday I baked a whole cake and I ate half um and I beat my I'm, I'm my world's worst critic I'm my own worst critic and I beat myself up over stuff so I'm taking the next couple of days to kind of change my mindset and not applying my timeline to God because he's still God over everything and for me to say he's God over everything and not believe that 
he has my timeline in mind is arrogant in a sense. So that's why I shared that with everybody this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. And just so y'all know, so y'all not like, why she keep bringing her up there? Um, me and Chanel know each other already. <laughs> so I know her history. I know her heart. So that's why I don't, you know, mind. I mean, I don't mind letting anyone speak, but just, just for FYI, if y'all like, okay, now, <laughs> but I know Chanel's heart and I know her, we know each other. Um, so thank you so much for sharing Chanel. <clears throat> Does anyone else have anything they want to share from what they've been hearing God say? Because Chanel shared about how for her personally, it helps her to not say a date or not ask for timing. Um, good morning, Ashley. Good to see you on, girl. Um, um, it helps her to not say a time. Oh, okay, Bertha, aka Hubby, come on, come on up. You can good come morning, up. everyone. Good morning, good morning. Just morning. wanted to jump on this call really quick, uh, just to share something that had resonated with me yesterday. Um, I know my wife has um, been encouraging me to, you know, partake in this this nine day fast, which I've been trying to do for the best of my ability. As you know, there's a lot of different moving parts that are kind of moving along with me right now. But um, for the most part, I'm definitely in it 100. Uh, percent But what really solidified it for me yesterday, um, I um, my wife had sent me the sermon i believe it was the sermon from link church or something like that and they were talking about uh samuel and um as i was paying attention to that to that sermon uh mind you she had sent it to me earlier in the week but i didn't have a chance to really stop and really focus on it nor even actually go through it but it wasn't until yesterday i took a couple of minutes i sat down and i actually listened and as i was listening I felt a change in myself and um, unexpectedly it actually brought a tear to my eye because certain things that were actually going on within me were revealed within that sermon. And one of the things that were the major takeaways for me uh, was around the two, um, not necessarily uh, the, the conditions around prayer and the conditions that really stuck out were number one, no substitutions. And that is something, you know, oftentimes when we realize that we're not getting what we want in the time or the fashion that we want it, we begin to downsize what it is that we're asking for. And uh, we start to settle in a sense. And, and that's something that I've been doing. I've even been second guessing, not only just with the whole situation around, uh, um, you know, us getting blessed with a child, but other parts of my life as well, just in my business alone. That was something where I started having these limited beliefs and these doubts. And then the second um, condition that was also thrown out there, which really, really resonated with me, was for us to stop making selfish prayers. And that one really hit home because I've been embarking on since this year has started. I've been um, taking this journey where every six o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, uh, three o'clock, six and nine p.m., I would stop what I'm doing so that I can focus on a particular scripture and actually take some time to pray. Now, I've been consistent to the best of my ability. I've oftentimes during the day, you know, that's a little hard to remain consistent with due to the fact that, you know, there's meetings and stuff that I'm constantly on. So, um, but what I've always recognized were number one, my prayers were always very short. And number two, my prayers were very self-centered. They were always focused on, God, this is what I want for you to do for me today. And they were never really taking the time to say, God, here's my business. I'm giving it back to you. I'm asking you to do something with it. And that was something that really hit home when he started speaking around Hannah. And when she was praying, she didn't just say, God, give me a child. But she said, God, give me a child and I'll return him to you. So that's the, that's what really stuck out to me. And the funny thing was, as he continued to keep emphasizing the name Samuel, 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 what really hit home for me was the fact that that was actually going to be my birth name when my mom finished, gave birth to me. I mean, my cousin stepped in and my name is what it is now, but it just really hit home because as we sit and we think about the importance and the role that Samuel played throughout the Bible, 
it just really resonated with me because it helped me to understand that there is something bigger. God didn't just put me here or in this situation to recognize or to see or to be in the amidst all of these other folks that are around me that are constantly having children or are constantly prospering for me to just sit on the sidelines and just be a spectator. He put me in this because there's something greater and I need to stop one, comparing myself to others, but two, recognizing that this space that I'm in is because I'm supposed to be giving birth to a Samuel not only in the physical of us bearing a child, but also in my business as well. So I, I was definitely touched by that. And I just wanted to come on here and um, just praise God, praise God for his uh, continued answered prayers and just being a timely God, especially when you are feeling like you are at your wit's end. So thank you. Can I say something? Sure. Sorry, Michelle. Good morning, everybody. Can I just say something really quickly? Um, Chanel, I just want to thank you for that scripture because, um, so full transparency this week, I've been battling, I've been praying, like I'm quoting scripture. I'm like, God, you said in your word, ask and you shall answer, seek and you shall find, knock and you shall open. And what I've been asking God are these, these transparent questions like, God, when will I hold my baby? God, when will you deliver us? And I'm not hearing anything. And I'm finding myself not so much frustrated, but I have to constantly remind myself like, Lord, I know you're going to answer me when you see fit to do so. Now, I know through the program um, and also some of the things that Michelle said, sometimes when God is speaking to you, you hear it in your own thoughts, you hear it in your own voice. And I'm not hearing anything. And I've been asking God, I'm like, God, I want a Hannah experience. I want a Sarah experience. I want an Elizabeth experience. I want you to be able to come to me and I want you to be able to speak to me. And I'm not hearing anything. But then it dawned on me when Chanel just read that scripture because I want last year, not, I'm sorry, not last year, in 2022, I prayed and fasted for 21 days. I had on my sackcloth. I completely removed myself from the world and I was in deep prayer and God blessed us with a baby. We were pregnant and then three months later, I miscarried. Prior to me miscarrying, I had a vision in my living room. I, I saw two things that put that flashed before my eyes really quickly. I saw Will Sperm being just cleansed by the Holy Spirit. And I saw two car seats and I didn't know what that meant. And when I got pregnant and they told me it was just one baby, I was just like, okay, it didn't, it, it didn't click at that time. But just now when Chanel read that verse, that vision popped in my head, like, wait a minute, Lord, so I, there is something that's coming and you don't have to, you're not going to answer me the way that I want you to answer me. You're going to find ways to answer me. And I'm just grateful. And I thank God that he placed us in this. I thank God for just having this moment and to just being able to just share with everyone. So thank you, Lord. And I thank you all as well. Ooh, that is so good. Um, and thank you for, for saying that because a lot of times I will, I will tell you guys things that I've done as far as prayer and how God may speak and how God may give me certain uh, deadlines or timelines, but God speaks to us in so many different ways. It can be a dream. It could be a vision. It could be through another person. So thank you for sharing that and showing how sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time, hearing the right thing in order for God to speak. And he doesn't always speak on our time. He doesn't do everything on our time. Like he's the author of time. He's not actually not in time. He's outside of time. So it's, that's so good. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you guys for like, um, so now y'all, y'all got to know y'all see Will came on and he's like being husband of the year. Y'all better be sharing these videos with your husbands. Okay. He's showing, <laughs> like, make sure, and and I, I think I've said this, but if I have not, please don't, don't feel like you can do all this by yourself and your husband has no uh, part in this part. He's not just there to plant the seed. He's got to be a part of this journey too. And if your husband is not a believer or he's like, doesn't believe in all this extra stuff, you're going to have to go to war for his heart and his uh, soul before you go to war for this baby because y'all about to raise a child together. And I just wanted to share something. Um, does anyone else have anything they need to say? Because I do need to um, tend to him real quick. 
and I don't want us to stop. Does anyone else have anything they want to share just for like, you know, three minutes? <laughs> anyone, come off the mic, somebody, anybody. And I'll turn my camera off and then I will um, come right back. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Anything they have experienced this week so far? If you do, just come off the mic. No? Okay. I'm going to just turn my camera off then. Okay. So, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for everyone who has joined us today. Thank you for every person who has shared with us today. Thank you for, like Chanel said, the fulfillment of the vision that you have for us today, God. I thank you that we are continually um, learning and depending on you in ways that we never have before. I thank you for every husband that is represented on this call because of their wives are standing here for them. I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you um, help them to stay connected during this time. So many marriages um, have so many issues because of infertility. Infertility can break you apart or it can bring you together. So God, I just thank you that every couple is brought together on a new level during this journey, that they are trusting you on a new level in Jesus name. And I wanted to share one thing that um, Rachel, who could not be on here, um, she said that she wanted to share some things in regards to yesterday's call. She said, I'm excited. Can y'all hear me? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm going to play a little music real quick. And then I want y'all to just, um, oh, you can hear me. Okay, good. All right. All right. So um, I'm, she said, I'm really excited about your in-person retreat. In fact, I just started thanking God a few days ago that our children will be playmates. I thank God that he will surround my son with children that are also believers. So think about this. Just imagine, God, we are uh, guys that we are all having our babies, that y'all are all having babies around similar time frames. And we have a retreat or we come together where we can all celebrate together. And just imagine your friend, your daughters, your sons will be able to play with each other, to celebrate with each other. Just imagine, I'm just imagining right now, I just saw a picture that we took. I saw a picture in the spirit realm, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I saw a picture and there was two. I see eight women in the name of Jesus. I see eight. Um, I saw eight, four in the top, four in the bottom. Four people are sitting in chairs and four people are standing up and they're holding their babies. The women are holding their babies. So I just feel like God, in the name of Jesus, that um, whenever this time comes, when there will be at least eight women who can come and in person see uh, the fruit of the womb from everyone else. So I just thank you, God, whatever you're saying with the eight, if there is eight that is going to happen this year, I receive that for them. Whatever you're saying, God, whatever the timing is, God, um, I just thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are just mm, comforting those in the meantime, but whoever the eight is, glory to God for that in the name of Jesus. So I just saw that. Uh, I saw that. So anyways, okay, I got distracted. I was supposed to be reading uh, what Rachel said, but I just saw like a picture and there was four people standing up and four people sitting down and they were holding their babies. Okay, back to what Rachel said. She said, okay, yeah, she wanted her, her son to have uh, babies to play with. And then she's, Okay, she said some other things, but she said she has some moves of us, the first. Okay, well, I ain't gonna say that either. But anyways, yeah, so basically she said uh, she's excited about the in-person retreat. So that is something that um, we want to do. Jessica, yes, come on up. Let me find you on the list so I can. Good morning. You, good morning. Sorry, I sound like this. I literally just woke up and realized it was the call. So I jumped on really quick. <laughs> Oh, no um, problem. <laughs> but I heard you saying your vision about the eight women on stage. And I kid you not, I debated getting on here and saying this, but I kid you not, last night I had a dream and I was on stage with other women and my I had a baby. I had a baby girl with me. And I was like, wait, and my, I remember thinking like, where did this baby come from? I don't remember giving birth, but there was these other women on the stage with me and they had women, they had babies with them too. And I remember thinking, Lord, where am I? And there was people in front of us because we were on a stage 
And I just remember waking up like, what was that, Lord? I receive it. I claim it, but I don't know what that was about. And now hearing your vision, it just, oh, the Lord is so good. Sorry. Thank you, Chanel. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. That's like bringing tears to my eyes. Um, dreams versus visions. Just, just to give some of y'all clarity. Dreams are when you're sleeping at night. Vision are when you are in the daytime and you might just kind of like, not black out, but you kind of just, whoa, you just like imagine something. And it's like you might see a, it's like a movie. You see a movie across your face in your eyes. It's, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's like a daydream, but it's, you're awake. So um, yes, God, and God shows me things in that way a lot of times. So I'm glad we have this call to mark this moment. I'm glad Jessica woke up. That wasn't by coincidence that you woke up at this time and you hopped on. <clears throat> so I just want to thank you for um, sharing because I just believe that God is just, uh, anointed this time for us and that everyone is here together for a reason and it's all by divine purpose in Jesus name thank you Lord okay so remember to, today and I absolutely did not prepare myself for today because today is supposed to be <laughs> no meat Lord Jesus I need to go get some some more groceries today is supposed to be no meat and let me clarify for y'all pescatarian we talk about no fish either, okay? You can't be smacking on no salmon and flounder talking about, well, you said no meat, this this is seafood. No, ma'am, sir, no scrimps. <laughs> That's what Chanel said. No shrimps, no shrimp, no fish. It's meat. It was a, it was a living being. <laughs> it had eyeballs. <laughs> it had a mama and a daddy. If it had a mama and a daddy, you can't eat it today, okay? You can go get some Beyond Meat. You can have a Beyond Burger if you want to. But today is no meat. And I was not ready for this, y'all. Now, granted, 2015 and 2015. So this is crazy. This is the kind of stuff I do, y'all. So y'all, when I be telling y'all, I be asking God for timelines. And I'm like, you know, God, God, tell me this. God, tell me that. I just do crazy stuff. My faith is kind of weird. And, and I guess God knows. He's like, okay, here you go. So in 20. 2014 I had New Year's Eve at my church I came home I didn't eat my car was broke I didn't even have a car at that moment because my car had had a total loss and I hadn't got a new car yet somebody was dropping me off at my apartment and when I was getting out of the car I heard the Lord say no meat in 2015 and I was like what what is that and then I just decided at that moment for the year 2015, I was going to eat no meat, no fish, no nothing. So I went the whole year and, and was a vegetarian. I wasn't vegan, but I was vegetarian the whole year. So it's crazy that today I'm worried about one day and I don't want a whole year before without any meat, but it's just about preparation. And um, I just believe God is going to bless every sacrifice that we make. So today, again, no meat, no fish. You can go get you some Beyond Meat. It's not really meat. It didn't have a mother. It didn't have a father. <laughs> There's lots of uh, things that, that I should already got to prepare because I'm like starving right now. <laughs> um, technically, eggs are from a chicken, but that's more like vegan. Like vegetarians eat eggs. So you can have eggs, I guess, if you, if, if you desire. But eggs so high right now. Bump them eggs. I'm not buying no $5 eggs no $8 eggs, no $14 eggs. They are super high. If you go to Publix or something, you can get them for $5 at Aldi if you want some. But anywho, so remember today, no meat. Yes, go support Tabitha Brown. Get some, get some of her stuff, okay? Um, and if you're vegan or vegetarian already, um, I challenge you to try something different. If you're already vegan or vegetarian, I'll challenge you to maybe do 
um, raw vegan today, maybe where you only eat fresh fruits and vegetables instead of what you normally eat, because that's not a challenge for you if you normally eat vegan or vegetarian. So that would be my challenge. If you're already vegan or vegetarian, then go ahead and do raw fruits and vegetables for today. That'll be a step up from what you normally do. That's oof, that's that's tough, but you can do it. You can do it. Um, all right. So we went over our verse verses for today. I'm going to post this all in a Facebook group. Um, uh, the one that uh, Chanel shared, Habakkuk 2 and 3. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 11, go ahead and read the whole chapters today. Meditate on those two. Your declaration, and this this speaks to um this speaks to what Chanel said, um, because you don't know when you're gonna hold your baby in your arms. You are, I consider myself highly blessed that God decides to share timelines with me. And I almost think maybe he shares timelines with me just for the testimony purpose, because he knows that I will be loud and proud and be like, Jesus told me that you were going to be in my arms. But like, he knows that I'm going to say it out loud. And I'm not saying that you won't. And that's not why he's sharing. I'm not saying that you won't. So let me clarify that. But sometimes when God knows he's got to show up and show out and you're about to have an audience, sometimes he's got to do things a little different and a little um, stuff that he doesn't normally do. So I understand that I am blessed that sometimes God does show me timelines that, that, that doesn't happen for everyone, but just your, your, your declaration for today is that I will hold my baby in my arms. And I challenge you to not add nothing else to that. I will hold, well, let me say it this way. I will hold my healthy baby in my arms, <laughs> okay? I challenge you not to say in 2023 or whatever. If you feel like you haven't heard that specifically or you don't know when, I mean, you could say it by faith, but just remember, like Chanel said, if if that is not what happens, if, that, if there are still more challenges that are to come before that miracle comes, just be, just be, um, just be open. I mean, of course you could say anything by faith that you desire, but listen to what God is actually saying to you. And if, and he may say it like, um, Bertha said, he might not say it. You might not hear it or, you know, hear the thoughts in your head. That might not be how you hear it. Um, you might, um, have a dream. You might have somebody speak to you. I just spoke today. I saw eight people pregnant. So God, if I'm if I'm uh, divinely connected to Michelle, Lord, let me be in that number. Let me be in that number. I will hold my healthy babies in my arms. Yes, in Jesus' name. So let's let that be our declaration for today. Let's meditate on those scriptures. I know it's Saturday, so it's it's a lot um, easier to kind of like um, not be in the. Um, uh, same mode because you're not like working all day, you know, or some people might be, depends on how your jobs are. Um, but just stay focused. We only have three more days left. Okay. All right. Let's see. I want to read where some comments are. I had a dream last night that I was holding my baby in my, oh wow. I was holding my baby in my arms and handing my baby to dad just this morning. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I will be holding my healthy baby in my arms. Yes. I will hold my babies in in my hands this year, 2023 in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever God is telling you, I want you to say it out loud and declare it. Don't forget that there's so much power in your words. <clears throat> and I think <clears throat> there's so much power in your words and you have to say things out loud. So excuse me for clearing my throat. Chanel, the enemy is trying to send us both itchy throats and I rebuke every sickness that's trying to come against our bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Bertha's twins in Jesus name. She saw the twins. She saw them in the dream. So here we go. Come on, Lord, do, do what you show her. You gave her a vision for a reason. So I ask Lord that you bring it to pass in Jesus name. Chanel stands in agreement. Jessica says, amen. Thank you for using Jessica this morning, God, allowing her to be on this call just at the right time, Lord, letting her share in Jesus name. Cheryl says she'll be holding her healthy babies in our arms. Amen. Thank you for Ashanta being able to share today. Thank you for everyone who has shared. Thank you for Will even being on the call today to show us how your husbands can come in and stand in agreement with you. 
and you all be um, growing together through this journey and not growing apart. So I pray for every couple, every marriage that will become stronger, um, that the faith will be continue to build in Jesus name. And so like I always do, I'm going to play the music while I'm uh, finishing up everything I'm posting in the Facebook group. If you'll have any other things you want to share, please share it in the group. Continue to encourage each other. And um, thank y'all again. I'm about to go change this boo-boo diaper because I've been smelling it, y'all. All right. Me and my husband refers to our baby or babies as the golden child and extraordinary child in Jesus name. Amen. Extraordinary children for Chanel, Mary, Lazavia, Jessica, Jerrica. Oh, I've never seen that name. Did I? Jerrica, is this your first time? Or maybe I don't remember. Okay. Jenny, Horton, Erica, Dion, Cheryl, Sotero, Bertha, Ashanta, Ashley, another Ashley, Ina. I don't think I've seen that name either. Um, Sule, Sequoia, Toya, Daquisha. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for everyone who is connected today, for everyone who is uh, divinely here in this moment, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. I just thank you for this worship moment. Give us a chance to worship you. Give us a chance to honor you. Give us a chance to thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We surrender ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to you. We walk with um, the shoes of peace on our feet, like we said in Ephesians, God. Thank you, Lord, for the peace you are bringing on this journey. Thank you, God, for the strength you're bringing on this journey. Thank you, God, for the healing you're bringing on this journey. Lord, we are nothing without you. And we surrender our process to you. We surrender our timeline to you. Lord, we want to be in your will. Speak to us, God. Help us hear your voice clearly, God. Remove every distraction, everything the enemy is trying to throw in our way, God. We just ask you and we seek you honestly and, and eagerly. Lord, we thank you, God. Giving up meat is nothing. Giving up meat is nothing for what you're about to do in our lives. We thank you for these moments in time that are sealed in Jesus' name. Thank you for us having the technology to, to be able to record and seal and mark in time this day, this moment, this second, God, that you are deciding and you are moving and you are shifting our futures right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are omniscient. You are um, all-knowing, God. You are everywhere at once, so you can be in each and every one of our homes. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that comforts us, God. When we feel agitated, when we feel irritated, God, just comfort us in the name of Jesus. Help our hormones align with the way that you designed them to be, God. Help our wounds to align with the way you designed them to be, God. We thank you right now that you're helping us to make the choices, help us to be consistent, help us to have the discipline that we need, God, to have our bodies in the optimal condition to get pregnant. We have four days to bust a move, and you're trying to have your baby by this year. Even if God doesn't do it, do you want to be prepared or no? Do you want to be prepared or not? So be prepared. Prepare your body as if it's going to happen, okay? Even if it doesn't happen now, do you want to be prepared or do you want to be like, well, I mean, and I did a little, no, get prepared, get your weapons ready for battle. This is a battle. This is a battle and you got to fight for what you desire. This is a battle. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not shopping today. I'm not eating meet tomorrow, Lord willing, headed to church now for services. Happy Sabbath. Thank you all for words of wisdom. I've learned so much these five days. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Are we having a call tomorrow? Um, I've thought about changing it because I know most people are going to some type of service. Um, I am still not going to um, public service now. I'm watching from home for probably two more weeks before we take him out. So if you... Um, there's people who go to services today and tomorrow. So if if you can't make it, I will say just watch the replay. Um, I'll probably just leave it because I don't want to confuse people and change the time. But if I do change the time, I'll let y'all know and I'll put it in the group. 
So thank you, Lord, for everyone who is um, joined here to, together, no matter what denomination they're in, God. I just thank you that our hearts and our minds are together as believers. We trust in the same God, God. We love you, and we thank you for just being with us and encouraging us in this moment, God. And we thank you that you are sending us out into the world, into our days, encouraged, stronger, healthier in our mind, body, and spirit in Jesus name. So I will um, go ahead and start playing the music. If you guys want to stay along and continue to uh, worship or just sit in the atmosphere, or if you have anything you want to type, or if you want to encourage each other, you are free to do that. <laughs> <laughs> 